We continue now at the top of Daf Yud Gimel Amad Aleph and Masechus Tainus. This is Tainus Daf 13a. And the previous summit, the Gemara had said that when they would have a public fast day, so the first half of the day, they would look into the uh, deeds of the community for corruption and similar and similar things. And then in the second half of the day, that's when they would read from the Torah, and that's when they would daven. And so the Gemara now says, Epochana, why don't we reverse it? As Rashi over here says, Epochana, the palga do you have a karu miftri. Maybe in the first half of the day, that's when they would read and do the haftorah. Ubo rachami, and that's when they would daven. Uvi'idach palga ma'ini. Maybe it's in the latter half of the day that they would look into the deeds of the community. And the Gemara continues, Lo salka da'itach. Do not think that is the case. Tichsiv, because there's another pasuk that says, there's a pasuk in Ezra. It says, Ve'ela ye'yasu kachar bediver l'cha Yisrael al me'al ha'gola ve'gomer uchsiv v'v'min chaso erev kamti mita ne'si ve'efer sakapa yel Hashem. So basically the pasukim are saying that first we take care of the needs of the community, Yayasu, everybody gathers, ga- gathers together, and he, ins- he inspects the deeds of what's going on. And then the Pasuk says, later, erev, that's when we do the davening. So you see, again, it's going to be the first half of the day that the deeds of the community are inspected, and it's in the second half of the day that they read from the Torah and that they daven. And the Gemara continues, Amar Raphram Bar Papa, Amar Ravchista, Raphram Bar Papa says in the name of Ravchista, Kol Shehu Mishum Evil, any situation where a person, let's say, is fasting because of mourning, you go in Tishabov, for example, Tishabov. The Ovel, or let's say you have an actual Ovel. So in those cases, Asr bein becham and bein bitzonin. The Isr of Rechitza applies whether it's hot water or cold water. However, Kol Shum Misham Tainug, any situation where the reason they're refraining from bathing is simply to refrain from having pleasure, could go in Tainus Sibor, for example, by a regular public fast day. So becham and Asr, so then bathing in hot water is Asr. But so in mutter, but bathing in cold water is going to be mutter. So essentially, what Rav Chista over here is saying is that in a regular public fast day, it's mutter to bathe in cold water. The prohibition is only in hot water. It's only on days like Tisha B'Av or things that have to do with Avelis. That's where there's a total prohibition, whether it's hot or cold, to bathe. And so the Gemara says, Amar Ravidi Baravin. Ravidi Baravin says, Af no nami tanina. We learn the same thing in our Mishnah. What does the Mishnah say? It says, V'noel in Eshamer Chatzos that they close up the merchatzos, they close up the bathhouses. Now in the bathhouses means to say they're closing up the ability to bathe in the hot water, but it's still possible to bathe in cold water. So it seems exactly what Rav Chista is saying. The prohibition is only on a tiny sea, where it's only in Chamin. There's no prohibition in Sonin. And so the Gemara says, Amar le Abayas, Abayas, and back to Ravidi Baravin, V'ibit Sonin, Osir, one second. If the halacha was that on a tiny sea, where you're not even allowed to bathe in cold water, do you think it's going to say in the mission that they would close up all the rivers? In other words, it's impossible to close up the possibility of bathing in cold water. So there's really no proof from the Mishnah. Just because they close up the Merchatzos, that does not necessarily mean that it's permitted to bathe in cold water. And so the Gemara continues, Amar Rav Shisha de Ravidi, so Rav Shisha de Ravidi says, Abba Hachi Kashali. Here's what my father, Ravidi Baravin, here's what he was bothered by by the language of the Mishnah. Michli, let us see. Tonight it already said in the Mishnah, Asr Berachitza, it already said that it's a problem to bathe. So Noel and Asamar Chatzos, Lamali, what's the point of having that added line that they closed up the bathhouses? So it's the added line that's teaching him this idea. El Alav Shmamino, rather, is it not teaching us Becham and Asr Betzon in Mutter? It's exactly, again, this idea. The prohibition is only in hot water. There's no prohibition in cold water. And the Gemara continues, Lema Messiah, let's, let's bring a proof from the following. Brysa Rashi over here says, Let's bring a proof to what Rav Chista says. Because the other part of Rav Chista's statement was is that if it has to do with mourning, it's completely usher to bathe, even in cold water. Let's support that idea. It says in the Brayso, It says anyone, anyone who's chayiv to do a tefillah, let's say you're chayiv to immerse in the mikvah, you're allowed to do it. Bein betishabov, bein You're allowed to do it on tishabov. You're allowed to do it on yom kippurim. So we're talking here about tishabov. And it says that you're allowed to be tovel on Tishabov if you're chayv etvilos, if you're chayv to immerse for whatever reason. So the Gemara says, Bimai, what exactly is the person immersing in? Ilema becham, and if we're talking about immersing in hot water, tvila becham and mi'ika, is there such a thing as a mikvah of hot water? Shu'uven inu, that's drawn water. It's, it wouldn't be a kosher mikvah if it's warm. So el lav bitzonin. So obviously, what's the Bryce is saying? The Bryce is saying, if you're chayv, if you're a chayv etvilos, so then you're allowed to bathe in cold water. And it seems to be that only someone who's chayve tvilos is allowed to bathe in the cold water, otherwise not allowed to. It seems clear, like what, like what Rav Chista said, that there's a prohibition on Tisha B'av to bathe even in cold water. And so the Gemara says, Amar Rav Chana Bar Katina, Rav Chana Bar Katina says, Lo It's not true. There is a situation of hot water that could be a kosher mikvah. The chamei teveria, the springs of teveria, they were hot water. 
And so it's saying that in such a situation, Chai Tvilos can bathe in the Chamei Teveria, but everybody else is not allowed to. It's possible that it was only referring to hot water. So the Gemara says, one second, Yihachi, if so, if that's the case, Eimu Seifel, let's look at the end of that b'raisa. Amr Vichanina Skan HaKohanim. Vichanina Skan HaKohanim says, Kedai Hu Beis HaLokeinu. The Beis HaMikdash is worthy enough that you won't do a tvila one time during the year. In other words, he doesn't want to be so lenient. Even someone who's chayve tvilos, but it's tishabov, or mourning the base on mikdash, it's not appropriate to base. Or if chaninim he prohibits it. So the Gemara now says, one second, if you're understanding that this brisa is going with the idea that cold water really is mutter, that's how you're trying to be dochi, you're saying we're talking about chami teveria, and really on tishabov, cold water was always mutter. So what does Rav Chanin Askanakohanim even mean? Yerchatz betzonin. What do you mean that you should be la'abe tvila pamachas b'shonin not to do the tvila? Do, do the tvila and sonin. There's already a way to do it anyway. You don't need a leniency. And so the Gemara says, no, Amr Papa a Papa says, be asked for the loshchiach tzonin. This particular lo- location the Bryce is talking about, let's say Chamei Teveria, it was a location they didn't have any cold water to bathe in. So there was no cold water available. So that's why Chanin Eskana Kohanim is saying, you can't be so mekel. You're not allowed to go in hot water. And the first opinion of the Bryce is saying, no, you're allowed to go in even in hot water if you're chayvei tvilos in such a situation. And the Gemara continues, Toshma, come in here, another proof, Kishamru asr b'malacha. When they say by a tiny seaboard that you're not allowed to do malacha, lo amru ela biyom aval belay l'mutter. That halacha is only true during the day, but during the night it's actually mutter to do malacha. Well, Kishamru asr b'nilas asandal, and when they talk about the fact that it's prohibited to wear shoes, lo amru ela biyir, that's only true in the city. Aval bederech, but if somebody's on the road, mutter, then it's mutter. Haketzad, how so? Yotzi lederech, noel. Let's say the person's going on the road, he could put on his shoes. Nichnas lo'ir cholitz, when he enters the city, he should take off his shoes. And now the line that's relevant to us, uchisha amru aser berechitza, when they talk about the fact that you're not allowed to bathe on a public fast day, lo amru ela kol gufo, that's only true to bathe the entire body. Aval pon of yod of mutter, but to bathe, let's say to wash the person's face, hands, and feet, that's going to be mutter. And then the Brisa says, The same halacha applied to somebody who's ostracized and somebody who's an ovel. In other words, the Brisa over here is saying that the same halachas, presumably by rechitza as well, that apply when it comes to a public fast day, apply to an ovel. And so the Gemara says, My love, this last line over here that says menuda and ovel are the same, is it not saying akulu? It's going on everything. It's going on rechitza also. The same idea that we just said by rechitza that gufo is a problem, and pun of yod of is mutter, that's true by an ovel. So one second, what are we talking about? What kind of water? And if we're talking about hot water, so we're saying that an ovel is a lot of bathe, and a lot of wash his face and hands and feet in hot water. Pun of yod of Raglov misharu, do you think that the, the face and the hands and the feet is permitted? Rav but Rav Sheshis said, ovel oser lohoshit etzbo bechamin, that an ovel is not allowed to put his fingers in hot water. So you see, it's not allowed. So, so it must be, El alav, rather, is it not? But sonin, we're talking about cold water over here. In other words, when it says, Uchisha amru asr berechitza lo amru ela kol gufo, aval pan of yad of mutter, that's really all talking about cold water. And it means to say that in a tiny seaboard, there's even a prohibition when it comes to cold water. That would go against what Rav Chista said. And so the Gemara says, lo no li olam bechamin. Really, that line that's talking about rechitza on a public fast day, it's only talking about hot, hot water. It's consistent with Rav Chista. There's only prohibition with hot water. So the kakash halach v'chein atamotzi b'menudu uveevel. But now you've got a problem because it says the same halach applies by an ovel. That doesn't make any sense because if we're talking about hot water, the same halach does not apply by an ovel. And so the Gemara says, no, asharakoy. It could be that that last line that v'chein atamotzi b'menudu uveevel is not going on rechitz. It's going on the other halachas. The halach about aser b'malacha is only during the day and not at night. The halach about the fact that wearing the shoes is only in the city and not on the road. Those halachas apply also b'menudu v'avil. And we'll take a look at a Rashi over here. Kesha amru asru b'malacha gabi tainas tzibur. When they said that in a tainas tzibur you can't do work. Lo amru ela biyom aval b'lai l'mutter. It's only true during the day. It's not true at night. Rashi points out something interesting. Mehocha ma'ashma. From here it's implied. The v'lele tishabav. That in the night of tishabav. Mutter b'malacha. That it actually would be mutter to do malacha. Vein bitel ela biyom. The issue of doing work is only during the daytime. Because the whole uh, the whole point over here is. They're saying it's only usher during the day, not at night, and then they're comparing it to to, to Ovil and to Menuda. But Rashi says Avil ain't mefaris min hadover. Even though that's the implication over here, we don't publicize this. And the Gemara continues. Tashma, come in here another proof. Diomer Rabbi Yava Hakohen Mishum Rabbi Yosi Hakohen, because Rabbi Yava Hakohen said in the name of Rabbi Yosi Hakohen, Maisa umeisu bonav shall Rabbi Yosi ben Rabbi Chanina. There was a story where the sons of Rabbi Yosi ben Rabbi Chanina died, 
and he actually bathed in cold water all seven days. You see from here that actually an avil is allowed to bathe in cold water. So the Gemara says you can't bring a proof from there. Hasam in that case over there, the case over there was, he was a mourner in succession. In other words, one of his sons died, and then one son died right after that. So now already it's not just one period of Shiva, it's one period of, a sh- of Shiva right after another. So in those cases, we're actually more lenient, and he is allowed to bathe in cold water. It's no proof to a regular case. The Tanya, as we learned in Abraisa, Tachfu Avolov, Zach, Arzeh, exactly this case. Let's say a person's periods of mourning, they go in succession, one right after the other. So, Hech Bitsaru, Mekel Bitsar. So if you have a situation where his hair is getting heavy, so he can lighten it by using a razor. In other words, we're Mekel, that he can trim his hair. We're also lenient that the person can wash his garment in water. Amar of Chistan of Chistan says on this particular brisa, Besar Avaloba Misbarayim. You're allowed to use a razor to trim the hair. You shouldn't do it with the scissors. In other words, the leniency is not is not 100 percent. Bemayim, you should wash the garment in water. Velobeneser, Velobechol, you shouldn't use soap or you shouldn't use sand. In other words, again, that leniency is not 100 percent and doesn't allow every kind of washing of the garment. And the Gemara continues, Amar Rava, Rava says, Avil Mutter, Lirchotz Bitson and Kol Shiva, that actually a mourner is allowed to bathe in cold water all seven days of mourning. Midi Dahave Abisra Vachamra. It's similar to, let's say, eating meat or having wine. Rashi over here says, Midi Dahave Abisra Vachamra, the Tainukain Kitsone, and they're just as pleasurable as bathing in cold water, and therefore it's actually Mutter. So the Gemara says, Mesve, we have the following question. We'll continue with this discussion in the next video on Dafyud Gimel Amud Base.